Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, okay. Bill Johnso sat up. Sorry. Bill Johnso sat up, but suddenly wobbled and had to stop himself from tipping off the side of the double bed. Dr. Kelly reached out to her hand to catch him, accidentally touching his left pectoral muscle. It was hard, firm, like grabbing a fillet of succulent beef. Whoa, sure you're good? she asked. I, um, I don't know, he said. What's wrong? I feel a little off. Off how? I thought you weren't experiencing symptoms. I'm not. I mean, I can't anyway. I'm not exact. It's not exactly possible. And why's that? Asked Dr. Kelly. She realized she hadn't taken her eyes away from his eyes in a while, so she looked at his big dick bulging in his pants instead. It's not possible because I already took a different vaccine last week, he said, his words a little slurred. You what? asked Dr. Kelly. Yeah, I was in NYC last week. That's what we refer to New York as where I'm from. And in order for me to travel, I had to be vaccinated. I figured I travel a lot, so signed up for the vaccine back home too. That's why I'm here. Dr. Kelly gasped. You've taken two doses of the vaccine? Yes, he said with a big smile, his head lolloping back and forth like one of those inflatable things you punch that doesn't ever fall over. <laughs> but, but, she said, it was all she could say as suddenly something happened. Bill Johnso began to change. Lightning cracked. Thunder bellowed. The floor shook like the worst earthquake that the room had ever experienced. Dr. Kelly's tits jiggled so much she had to hold on to them for dear life. What was going on? What was happening? Was she in a nightmare? Then, boom. Dr. Kelly was blown back, her tits cushioning her fall as she tumbled into the wall, then down to the floor. Dr. Bilkin Cherubs would, wouldn't have survived that fall, thought Dr. Kelly. The double bed crunched and there was a groan. As the smoke that had filled the room cleared, Dr. Kelly stared at the space Dr. Bill Johnso had been in. Had had been being the appropriate words because no longer was Bill Johnso lying on the double bed in his place was a man almost 175% his size <laughs> his clothes had torn away and were now a pile of shredded rags on the floor his muscles were even more muscular bulging and rippling and massive. But that wasn't the strangest thing. No. The strangest thing was, he was blue. And not just a little blue either, but icy blue. But, holy shit, thought Dr. Kelly, her eyes moving down to his cock. Well, technically it was a cock, but it looked more like a birthday party clown's balloon prior to it being turned into a balloon animal. It was big. Super big. Bill Johnso, are you okay? Asked Dr. Kelly. No, he said. Why not? Bill Johnso is gone. I am him now. This is the same thing that happened in the last fucking... Who are you? My name is Cure. Oh, were they going to fight each other? That would be fucking amazing. Dr. Kelly's hand shot to her mouth, then slid slowly down to her big left boob. And you are? Y yes, he said, anticipating her question. I am the cure. Dr. Kelly's vagina did a somersault. Could it be true? The cure. 
the very thing she had been getting herself off with due to her lack of dogging opportunities. Cure swung his mammoth legs across the bed and stood. He was so tall his head grazed the ceiling. But Dr. Kelly didn't look at his head for long. Well, n not that head, anyway. Oh, screw professionalism, thought Dr. Kelly. I'd like to suck your cock now, she said. <laughs> Cure nodded, so commanding and cool. Her saviour. Dr. Kelly dove at Cure's cock. It was so big, so heavy, like a, a long bean bag pumping with thick blood. She took it so far back into her mouth, his blue ball swung against her chin and knocked her into her beautiful big titties. He tasted great. Not a hint of chalkiness to be found. Cure grunted and moaned, which only made Dr. Kelly take him deeper. Deeper. Deeper still. Deepest. She threw back her head and grinned, a glob of spit connecting her mouth to the tip of his cock like a chunk of Spider-Man's web. <laughs> this, was what, this was what she had craved. Without warning, Cure lifted her up and tore away her doctor's uniform in one swipe of his big, bulky hand. Her breasts were unleashed, shining in the crimson sun. Her body was perfect. Cure twisted her in his grip, spinning her right around so that she was upside down, her tremendous hair brushing the tiled floor. She took his massive dick again as it whipped around like one of those inflatable men you see outside car showrooms. As, yeah, I kind of had that in my head there. <sighs> and then Cure began to feast on her vagina. He slurped and slopped and gulped and hummed. It was like he was a criminal on death row and her vagina was his final meal. Drool, mixed with the excitable juices from her fanny, oozed out on the floor. Is that a hot dog? <laughs> Oh my god, I'd forgotten about that. Is that a hot dog? <laughs> Asked Cure. Dr. Kelly wheezed. She'd forgotten all about the hot dog. I'm so sorry, she mumbled with, with a mouthful of cock. No, said Cure slowly. I like it. And then, in what was the most erotically charged moment of Dr. Kelly's life, Cure lapped the still warm hot dog right out of her vagina. Mmm, he grunted. It had only just begun, and yet it was the greatest sex Dr. Kelly had ever experienced. But it was about to get a whole lot better. The floor rumbled. A terrible, frightening rumble. Like the entire world was about to split in two. The lights flickered. There were petrified screams from out in the corridor. Then a deep, guttural roar. What was that? Cure dropped Dr. Kelly to the bed. His eyes were no longer on her. They were focused on the door, which rattled so much it looked as though it may fall away from its hinges at any moment. What's happening? asked Dr. Kelly. Him, said Cure somberly. Him who? Suddenly the door burst open and a bulky, Chonky, thick boy with a chiselled jaw, incredible bulges and a dick that measured up to cures, up to cures, strode into the room. There were little spikes protruding from his body, which wiggled like trees swaying in the breeze. Him, said Cure. Dr. Kelly instantly knew. She'd heard the rumours. She'd seen the fan art. The, f the slash fic. The memes. But until now, she had no idea it was all true. Standing in the doorway, his cock inflating like he had just seen his prey, was COVID. The COVID. Yeah, it seems like a good place to finish.
I'm a little bit hungover, but I can probably get this done. There's only like fucking a few pages. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, standing in the doorway, his cock inflating like he had just seen his prey, was COVID. The COVID. The two giant perfect specimens of men glared at one another. One green, one blue. One good, one evil. Both incredibly sexy. She's, she's mine, said Cure. No, said Covid, his voice deep and gravelly. I will fuck her. I will fuck her? Okay. You will have to go through me first, said Cure. Dr. Kelly's heart beat so rigorously against the inside of her chest, it reminded her of the time she was fucked from behind by my... Mike McKindo. I knew there'd be someone called Mike in this. Mike McKindo, the butcher from Peanut Butter La Lane. Um, sadly, not long after that, Mike died from COVID. Was she about to witness two men fight over her? Then, when they were... were then, when they were done and one was crowned the victor, would she get to be sexually serviced by the champion? They both grunted. They stamped their feet. <laughs> they flexed their muscles. Then they charged. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what happened next shocked Dr. Kelly to her very core. The two men didn't start pummeling one another into oblivion. They didn't scratch or tear or punch. Instead, they kissed. Slowly, their tongues sloshed together, making slopping sounds, like how a cat sounds when it eats its dinner. They both growled with ecstasy, gulping down each other's tongues like they were ravenous wolves. Animalistic. Passionate. Nice. Cure's hands... Cure's hand... Sorry. Cure's hand crept down Covid's rippling chest, caressing the enormous muscles, until he stopped on his big fat welly. He stroked it like it was a guinea pig, squeaking in pleasure as it erected. What the hell is this? demanded Dr. Kelly. Her tits warbled as she stomped over to the two giants among men. Her pussy was wet, ready to be jabbed with a meaty member, and yet the only two members in the room were only interested in each other. Or were they? Without warning, Covid turned to Dr. Kelly, and in one sweeping movement, he took her in his arms and brought her up to his face, burying his face between her breasts like they were Grandma's ri raspberry dry... <clears throat> but, uh, between her breasts like they were Grandma's raspberry trifle. Dr. Kelly... <laughs> what does that say? We weed. <laughs> Is that a made-up word? Dr. Kelly wewed. Hewed. Dr. Kelly wewed. A finger had found its way into her clunge. <laughs> <clears throat> a, finger, a, f a finger far meatier than any hot dog. But it wasn't Covid's finger. It was Cure's. Dr. Kelly was tossed to the bed... Her pussy gushing passion sauce as the two men turned their attention from I each other to her. Sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of this. I'm struggling. There's only really fucking two pages left. <clears throat> okay. Dr. Kelly was tossed to the bed, her pussy gushing passion sauce as the two men turned their attention from each other to her. Her heart raced as they approached a look in both of their eyes that could either be lust for her or lust for blood. Or both. Cure leapt onto the bed and plopped his cock into her gob, thrusting in and out so the tip of his cock practically nuzzled against her breakfast. <laughs> uh. Uh. Meanwhile, Covid had sex with her in the vagina. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> it was incredible. Her body ached from pleasure, and she shuddered. She actually shuddered. Cure bent down and began lapping at Covid's tongue, the two most the two powerful, moist muscles combating one another like expert swordsmen. 
As his dick punctured her esophagus, Cure began suckling at one of Covid's protein spikes. Covid moaned, but Dr. Kelly couldn't tell if it was through pleasure or pain. A moment later, she had her answer. Covid bust thick, creamy man syrup inside Dr. Kelly's private palace, his dick barely able to stay straight under the immense pressure. Then, like he had been holding it in until... <clears throat> then, like he had been holding it in until that exact moment, Cure coated the inside of Dr. Kelly's throat with enough cum to wallpaper the entire community centre. And it tasted like pure happiness. Not wanting to feel left out, Dr. Kelly joined them by ejaculating all over the place as well. Things got very messy, very quickly. She couldn't quite come to terms <clears throat> with what had just happened. Not 15 minutes ago, Dr. Kelly had been a normal, run-of-the-mill, just-your-everyday orthodontist turned vaccinator. She'd never done anything like this before, and with a patient, no less. She'd... She'd just had the very best sex of her life, both with the vaccine and the disease. She'd just had the very best sex of her life, both with the vaccine and the disease. They both pumped her full of their juices, and now they all lay there quiet and still. They had done everything they could to her. Now it was time for them to rest. And the three of them laid there in silence, listening to the sound of each other's breathing. In. Out. In. Out. In. There was no out. But from who? Dr. Kelly stood. Did it matter? She looked at the two men on the bed before her. She turned. She smiled. She felt good. That's it. That's it. That's the end of the book. <laughs>